I want to show how I created a few of my own uh, zine and zine related works. This particular zine that I'm working on here is called Agony Ants Advice for Young Female Artists. And this came from a variety of sources. Uh, I was in an historical museum and found a newspaper article which specifically was advice to a young female artist. It was from around 1900 and the advice given by the columnist to this artist was pretty poor and would not be uh, seen in a good light in the modern era. It was very condescending and sexist and focused a lot on the appearance of the artist presenting her work. So I utilized some of this material for the writing. It was already in public domain. And thinking of the concept of the advice column, I remembered I had done a photo shoot with my friend Mackenzie in 2018 that had a particular look that reminded me of a retro beauty queen sort of thing. She had a sparkly crown on and I thought that would be a very similar look to some kind of advice column. I did cutouts of this character and then I did a lot of color pencil white out on these Xeroxes because I didn't really have a direction at the time. All I knew is that I wanted it to be a combination of an artsy zine, a punk rock zine with the uh, original cutout and taped aesthetic. I wanted it to feature all this bad advice for artists. And I just had this vision in my head that was a big combination of things that I had generated personally, things that I had borrowed or sampled from other sources. And I wanted to make sure this felt like it was an actual art piece unto itself and not just a bunch of things that were Xeroxed and stapled together. I have absolutely done zines in the past, which were just a bunch of things coming off a copy machine. Every page looked the same, felt the same. It was all stapled together. It held together as a package, but I actually want this one to feel like a piece of art. And part of the approach is to have a lot of effort put into each page. On my originals, I used actual objects such as band-aids and masking tape, not just pen and ink and Xeroxes. I've noticed utilizing stamping techniques and printmaking techniques in my zines makes them feel a lot more personal and unique and more like works of art than things just kicked off a copy machine. For the very first page, I created a Linocut stamp. Linocut is a block, uh, but you can certainly utilize rubber stamps. You can get stamps made by other people, um, but Linocut and rubber are objects that you can purchase at the art store, carve in a design, and then ink and stamp onto paper. So the very first page ended up being a Linocut stamp. I alternated between black and white pages and color pages because making color copies on a copy machine that you're paying for is significantly more expensive than black and white copies are. I didn't want to make this 20 page zine something that was way too expensive for me to sell. I certainly have color pages in here, but I also alternated a few black and white pages. And then I used color paper with black and white copy settings so I could get a page that had some color to it, but the copy itself was very inexpensive. I believe it was about 14 cents a page versus uh, 65 cents a page to create these black and white copies on colored paper. Some of the pages were collaged by hand. Some were collaged on the copy machine. Some were collaged within Adobe Photoshop and other programs. Some of that is the kind of thing that a kindergarten student could do. Some of it is more specialized knowledge for sure. All of this was in the service of addressing the young artist who would be reading this and through use of bad advice, uh, sort of promote my own personal philosophy, which is that there really isn't any particular advice that's gonna work for everybody in art and uh, fixating on you know, the right way, the correct way to be an artist is the surest way to box yourself into a corner. Make art that does not have a lot of heart and soul in it, uh, not really get very far professionally because you're not doing anything that stands out above the rest. And that was my particular goal for creating this zine.
if you were able to hold this zine in your hand, you'd notice different paper types to it. The cover is cardstock. Most of the pages are a little more expensive kind of printer paper, something that's about 28 pounds. And heavy paper tends to feel nicer, more professional, more durable. The color paper is actually a little bit thinner. So it feels a little bit weaker, but it has color working for it. So you have three different paper textures. And if you were to rub your thumb across the print on the first page, you would feel the ink because that one is individually stamped. The ink is elevated off the paper. In my mind, having uh, that variety of paper weights, paper types, having something that has a physical, tangible quality to it, gives the zine a reason to exist beyond being a bunch of digital images on the web that could get across the same message. And while not every zine I've done has something similar to it, I think all of the zines that I've purchased and all the good ones I've made have something similar to them. I have a zine called Hello, My Name is Maggie. The cover is printed on vellum, which is sort of a translucent material, so light partially shines through it because printing on vellum is a little more dicey than printing on regular paper. The toner kind of sits on top of it from the printer. Uh, I sprayed it with a spray fix and that left this weird texture that if you run your thumb across it is very satisfying. I used actual Hello My Name Is stickers as part of the artwork. And then I had my daughter, Maggie, who the zine is about, individually sign each one of those. And that was a zine that was quite popular. I think every time somebody picked it up, they asked me what all the materials were because it was so unique. And you got the sense that this was more than something just mass produced with little care thought to the materials that went into it. If you're printing your work yourself, at some point you're going to have to collate and trim it. The process of collating is very simple. Lay out your pages in the order they need to be assembled and work assembly line to fold them. When you're folding them, use something that's pretty hard. Uh, a regular DIY bookmaker would use something like a bone folder. I've used a wood block, uh, something that won't damage the pages, but is strong enough that it's gonna give you a good crease. I crease my cover separately because mostly I use cardstock for my covers and find it's a lot easier just to crease them on their own. I am using a bow stitch. This is a stapler that allows you to have a very long reach so you can staple something that's very deep, but it also has this block mechanism that slides up and down and lets you put a setting that if you're going to staple 10 zines in a row, you can set the block, insert your pages, one hit and it's good. Once you've assembled your zine, you'll notice that there's pages sticking out. This is always going to happen because of the nature of folding paper and sticking it into a cover the middle pages are always going to push out. This is where we utilize our paper chopper. I'm gonna use this guillotine arm of mine to chop off the excess paper so I get a nice flush edge. Looks a lot more professional than if you are just leaving all that paper hanging out. If you made your zine on a copy machine, you don't have to worry too much about cutting into any specific material because when you print things off a copy machine, there always will be this quarter inch margin that doesn't get printed on. The copy machines do not do any kind of edge to edge printing. I have used commercial printers for some of my projects. One in particular, MagCloud has created digests that were around $3 each. And these are kind of like small comic book forms. Every piece of paper involved in it is the same. So the cover stock is the same as the paper that's inside it. If you're printing photographs, it's a much more affordable way to make zines through a service uh, than creating a photographic zine on a copy machine because as I mentioned before, an eight and a half by 11 copy machine print is 65 cents each side if it's in color. And you can imagine how that adds up uh, very quickly if you're trying to kick off 10, 20, 30 
copies of your zine. Much more affordable to work with a commercial printer if you're going to be making something in those numbers in color. Even though these particular zines were printed by a commercial printer, I was able to add a little bit of handcraft to it. For the titles of the models that are on the cover, I created a stamp using stamp letters and individually hand stamped each one of them. Did not take me much time at all. It probably took me more time to uh, put all the letters onto the stamp block and ink it than it took to actually stamp the issues. I have many other stamps that I use to help give that unique handcrafted touch. Similar to a book plate, I have a date stamp, I have a stamp with my name and my website address, and I have a stamp with my company logo. All of those go into the blank space on my mass-produced zines, as well as my handcrafted zines. But it helps create this uniformity between all the pieces. If you were to find my work at a zine table or in a zine shop, there has to be some kind of trade dress elements in my mind that unify what you do as an artist, the stamped look, the scribbled marker look, the torn collage, all of this stuff harkens back in my mind to the zines of the 1970s. And those are all attributes I love and I wanna carry them forward in the zines I'm making 50 years after the dawn of the zine age. Looking for material for my collage zine involved searching my house for random things, using photos that I took, using archival photos, finding material from magazines that were like individual words that I cut out and attached together. Not all of this is public domain material, and I understand if someone does not want to work with something that has a copyright attached to it. Uh, a lot of material is in public domain and you can find them through websites such as archive.org. There are also books that specifically publish copyright free public domain imagery that artists use for whatever craft they want to do. A lot of this has an old timey feel because it might have been created over 100 years ago, 200 years ago, so on and so forth. But that kind of material is available to anybody who is worried about stepping on any copyright toes. For me, working with my own photographs, drawing, and so forth uh, makes these projects kind of a fun opportunity to mix up something I might have done in 2017, 2018 with something I did in 1997, 1999, uh, other parts of my life. I love the idea that we as creators can draw from various eras of our lives maybe our writings as a child, so on and so forth, up to the current day, find the commonalities, create works in these zines that summarize who we are as people and human beings and aren't just necessarily an idea that you had this morning that you executed this afternoon and you know that zine is just a representation of how you felt on one day.